Unfortunately, it's forcing a lot of people to spend time off this beach. I've been here since around 11 this morning. The Coast Guard has only let one diver get closer to it. Several neighbors on the island asked the FWC about the environmental concerns this could raise. And one man who says it's easy to get in and out of the inlet told me it's a shame that one drunken boater could ruin it for the rest. And it's the same place where I anchor every time. <laughs> so, and I jump in the water, so I love this place. Now, police say the boater, 63-year-old Thomas Baker, is responsible for salvage. They say he staggered to shore with watery red eyes after the boat went aground. They say his blood alcohol level was a whopping 0.15. That's almost twice the legal limit. Officers say another woman that was on that boat made it out safely. But here on shore, you can still see where there's some uh, cans and some materials that are out here. And that's because hazmat crews are on the scene. I talked with them in the last 10 minutes. They say there's nothing they can do right now. They are waiting on orders from the U.S. Coast Guard. But since I last checked in with you at 5 o'clock, I can tell you the smell is getting stronger. You can uh, smell the fumes of diesel that are in the air. So people do want this cleaned up uh, quickly and safely and efficiently. And we'll continue to follow this and let you know when this is no longer an issue out here. Live on Palm Beach, I'm Farron Salee, uh, WPBF 25 News. Farron, thank you. Take a look at this. If you haven't seen it, people around the world have. It is one of the sweetest photos you're ever going to see. And unfortunately tonight, we have a heartbreaking update from the family. Hawk Buckmeyer, the Fort Pierce infant you see here, being hugged by his twin brother Mason, has died from health complications following his birth last month. Alex Browning joins us live tonight with their story. Alex? Todd, a sad story that thousands around the world, like you said, are following after that picture went viral. This photo was taken last week. It was the first time the twins were together after being born two weeks before. Now this hug was, has gone viral as Hawk fought to stay alive. The family announced on Facebook today, sadly, he has lost that battle. The twins were born at Chance Hospital in Gainesville. Hawk had a rare lung condition. Alex Browning, WPBF 25 News. All right, Alex, thank you. People who live on Miami Beach are voicing their concerns over planned aerial spraying to combat the Zika virus. The CDC says the pesticide being used is safe. It's been used for decades, but some people just aren't buying that, especially after officials said the spraying would take place at 5.30 in the morning to, quote, reduce human contact. The county mayor told Miami Beach City Commissioners today he plans to move forward with the aerial spraying, noting that if the spraying is not done, the governor might have to intervene. More than 100 people showed up at Miami Beach City Hall to protest. On Capitol Hill, Democrats say they could not vote for the Republican-backed version of the Zika funding bill because it would have taken away funding from Planned Parenthood. The CDC has already been borrowing money from other public health programs to fund Zika research. They warn that money is going to run out in a matter of weeks. House Democrats are demanding the Republican-controlled Congress pass a $1.1 billion emergency funding package before it's too late. They were going to have to look the people that we represent in the eye and know that when they could have prevented locally born Zika from coming here, that it's on their shoulders and their head that they didn't. Republicans blame Democrats for not passing the Zika bill as is. New details tonight about the teenager accused of stabbing a Martin County couple to death at their home last month in an unprovoked attack. Today, a sit down interview with Austin Harris father aired on Dr. Phil. Whitney Burbank joins us live and Whitney. This was a very emotional interview with Harris father expressing remorse to the victim's family, but also support for his son. And we're also finding out some new information. Dr. Wade Harriff says that his family has a history of mental illness. And tonight he told Dr. Phil that he blames those murders on his son's declining mental health. My husband would have never done that. No one, he would never, 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 never done anything like that. He, he's such a good person. Last month, the Martin County Sheriff said Austin attacked a couple in their Jupiter home, stabbing a neighbor. Deputies said they found the FSU frat boy eating the flesh of his victims and growling. They said he's in the hospital, he told Dr. Phil in today's interview. He's killed two people and eaten them, and the blood that you see is not his own. 
He says his son had been acting strange for weeks, posting bizarre videos on YouTube. But on that day, Austin's father says he took his son on a long hike. He says Austin made them leave, though, because he didn't feel good about being in the woods. Later, he took his son to dinner, but Austin left abruptly. He turned up at his mom's house. She called Austin's father. His father told Dr. Phil he grabbed a bottle of oil and was going to drink it. She stopped him. He poured it in a bowl, put Parmesan cheese on it, and ate that. She took Austin back to the restaurant, and Dr. Haruf said he grabbed him by the shirt. He said it was tough love. Austin left the table for a second time, walking apparently to his father's house, but instead crossed paths with the couple, sitting outside of their garage when deputies say Austin began seemingly randomly attacking them. Deputies say Austin drank some sort of caustic liquid that night. His father says it burned the inside of his throat, leading to the grunting noises that deputies say he made when they pried him from the bodies of his victims. As for his son, Dr. Roof says, quote, I love him. I'm not going to give up on him ever. He's going to get through this. Now, Dr. Haruf says that he's been to see Austin only once. He said he was unconscious and handcuffed, but not arrested. Dr. Haruf says he hasn't been allowed back to the hospital where Austin remains tonight. For now, we're live here in Palm Beach County, Whitney Burbank, WPBF 25 News. Okay, Whitney, thank you. Let's talk weather, and we're talking rain, especially in the northeastern corner of Palm Beach County. A steady flow of showers continuing to move on shore around Jupiter, Juno Beach, Palm Beach Palm Beach Gardens and down towards Sager Island. You can see some of the rain fairly heavy just passing North Lake Boulevard here and continuing to move off toward the west and the southwest. This shower moving right toward the acreage and should be arriving shortly as it continues its movement off toward the west and the southwest. Offshore showers also continuing to move toward the coastline. Most of these are getting weaker, but if they hang together, Singer Island heads up that shower your way at about 7 o'clock. Elsewhere, temperatures starting to recover and sunshine in many locations across South Florida right now. West Palm 86, 84 in Port St. Lucie, Vero Beach 82. Temperatures this evening, keep the umbrella handy. There'll be a stray shower, but overall fairly quiet for our part of South Florida. What about the tropics? It's been crazy the past couple of weeks. Anything going on tonight? Well, we are tracking a new wave. We'll talk about that when I'm back with your forecasts in a couple minutes. This just in, a woman convicted of intentionally hitting and injuring a man on a moped, leaving him with brain damage, has been sentenced to five years in prison. Christina Williams hit Tony Thompson back in June of last year in Boynton Beach. A friend who turned her in says Williams was frustrated because Thompson was driving too slowly. Thompson suffered a traumatic brain injury. The family of a teenager who was shot and killed by a Palm Beach County deputy says they're planning to sue the sheriff's office if they don't see some action. Back in January, Deputy Andrew Cano shot and killed Henry Bennett III following a traffic stop in Belle Glade. Now, nearly eight months later, the family's calling for transparency, asking the sheriff's office to release the dash cam video so they can get some closure. I need to know, man, whether my son murdered or it's just tragedy. He made a mistake that day. Show us the audio, show us the video, and show us the photographs. Because Sheriff Bradshaw, if it is as you say, that their son Henry Bennett turned around and pointed a gun at Deputy Cano, I won't have to file a lawsuit six months from now. The Sheriff's Office declined to comment on the case. Deputy Cano and his partner were placed on paid leave during an internal investigation. They have since returned to their jobs. Meanwhile, we just learned the deputy who shot and killed a man who committed a murder with a machete in West Palm Beach has been cleared of wrongdoing. Back in October 2015, investigators say a Mar-a-Lago killed his neighbor with that machete for refusing to clean up after his dog. When deputies got there, they say Lago refused to put down the weapon, then charged at them. The deputy fired, killing Lago. The Coast Guard is still searching for a woman who reportedly fell off of the Carnival Ecstasy cruise ship. It happened around 2.30 this morning near the Bahamas. Officials have identified the woman as 32-year-old Rena Patel from New York. The Coast Guard says the woman fell 11 stories into the water. In Delray Beach, a city employee is recovering from serious injuries after falling off of a dock while mowing a lawn. Fire officials say the drop was not very far, but the man landed on some rocks and had to be taken to the hospital. We are working to get an update on his exact condition. New audio recordings reveal the moments a Port St. Lucie police officer helped talk down a man threatening to pull a gun on a family member. Gun's going to be five feet to your left, magazine out, chamber 
Lock to the rear. Courtney, you keep one hand on top of your head and one on the phone, okay? When he said there was one hand on the phone, one hand on his head. Courtney Miller and his mother were in a heated argument apparently when he pulled the weapon. Police were able to talk to Miller on his cell phone and convince him to give up the gun. Miller's now in the St. Lucie County Jail facing aggravated assault charges. New details tonight about a man accused of robbing a bank in downtown West Palm Beach. Police say the suspect was living in a sober home and wanted to go to jail. Investigators say Logan Bradley of Lake Park went into the bank on Daytura Street just after 9 yesterday in the morning and demanded cash. They say he then went back to his sober home in Lake Park and confessed to the crime. A supervisor then called police. Bradley reportedly told officers he didn't want the money. He just wanted to go to jail. In Port St. Lucie, police have identified a bank robbery suspect as Kirk Pickard, but they're having trouble finding him. They say Pickard robbed the Seacoast Bank on Saturday. His last known address is in Hallandale, but investigators say he could be staying anywhere in South Florida. If you know where he is, call Crime Stoppers. The Lake Okeechobee water discharge is still a concern on the Treasure Coast, and today dozens attended a meeting in Stewart to come up with an action plan. The afternoon meeting was hosted by the city and the Florida League of Cities. Officials from Southeast and Southwest Florida were there to discuss the environmental impact stemming from those discharges from Lake Okeechobee to protect the strength of the dike, including the algae blooms in the St. Lucie River and Indian River Lagoon. I think the more people, the more voices we have, and the more united we are, the better it is for us. If we can work our, our a solution out and move forward, then we speak with one voice eventually to them, to both the state and the federal government, and the federal government plays a huge role in this. Organizers discuss newly proposed legislation and federal funding as possible solutions to the problem. Officials from more than 100 municipalities and counties were invited to this meeting. Well, happening now, a health advisory just issued for Lantana Beach. Officials say they are forced to temporarily close the beach to swimmers because of high levels of bacteria in the water. All other water samples taken at the beach Beaches from Boca Raton to Jupiter did test in the satisfactory range. Well, they are thrust from everyday tasks into life-threatening situations in the blink of an eye. All new at 6, an exclusive look behind the scenes of a local SWAT team. You're watching WPBF 25 News at 6. You're watching WPBF 25 News, always live, local, late-breaking. From standoffs to bomb threats, SWAT team members are constantly put into dangerous and potentially life-threatening situations. And as you might imagine, a great deal of training goes into preparing these brave men and women for any situation that comes their way. And tonight we're getting an exclusive behind-the-scenes look at what life is like behind the scenes of a SWAT team. Seneca Dange has the story all new at 6. The SWAT team is made up of the best of the best of the police force, and their training shows just that. Each day, strapping on this vest, which weighs at least 30 to 35 pounds. What you're about to see is a culmination of more than 100 hours of training. Training that constantly evolves as they deal with new situations. They're on call 24 hours, seven days a week. Um, they don't get paid extra for it. Uh, we get called out when we have barricaded subjects, hostage situations. Occasionally, we're called out to do a search warrant on a uh, with suspects that are known to be armed, that kind of thing. In this 90 degree humidity, weighed down by more than 30 pounds of equipment, firearms and protective plates, this elite group of police marksmen is running through drills. The 21 member Boynton Beach SWAT team meets about four times a month. Today's focus, explosives. Five, four, three, two, one, execute. execute. They're the men and women on the front lines, recently distracted by headlines. I think recently we've been really disappointed um, on how we do things. With the rise of cell phone video, dash cam video, and police body cam video, Captain John Bonifair says it's the visuals of police confrontations that have never been accessible before that's now putting a spotlight on law enforcement. And they're very powerful images. When one of these things happens, uh, you know, it hurts us as well. Uh, it, it, it's kind of like taking one step forward and two steps back, and it takes us a while to get to get the trust again. From explosives, execute to flashbangs. SWAT team members are constantly revising tactics and updating protocol, especially when it comes to psychotropic drugs. SWAT 
is trained specifically for those things. Just within the past month, local authorities have had to subdue two teenagers described as having super strength, Austin Harris and Nico Gallo. It seems to be a growing problem in South Florida, and police officers are focusing on how to de-escalate those types of situations. These individuals aren't feeling any pain. They, they're not pain compliant, so anything we do as far as strikes, hits, anything like that, they don't feel it. Uh, but the taser does affect them, and hopefully we can disrupt what they're doing in order to get enough officers there to take him into custody. Ready to react at a moment's notice and always on alert. They serve as just a fraction of the men and women, keeping us safe around the country. Sonica Dongate, WPBF 25 News. We all have so much respect for what they Absolutely. do. Absolutely. All the members of uh, local police departments and sheriff's departments as well. So, um, I thought it was going to be clear today. Where'd you hear that? I, <laughs> who are you listening to? I thought it was Chris Martinez. He's not here. It's September. Himself. It's the wettest month of the year. You can't go wrong with predicting rain just about every day in September. At least you know? in the morning, right? And in, in the, the afternoon. And I think that's the best chance will be overnight and in the morning. Although having said that, we're getting some rain now in northeastern Palm Beach County. Let's begin with a look at the numbers and the rainfall across South Florida from earlier today. And at times, boy, it was coming down. We'll show you those rainfall totals in detail in just a second. This was just before noon and some of the rain came down almost two inches. High temp today was right around 89 degrees. The morning low 78. You can see those temperatures compared to what that should be for this time of September and current temperatures mostly in the mid range of the 80s, mostly dry. The exception continues to be Northeastern Palm Beach County, where a couple of showers have just kind of moved on shore. You can kind of see this steady stream, some showers offshore moving onshore, brief periods of heavy rain, and at the moment, some heavy rain moving toward the acreage and areas of central Palm Beach County. You can see one shower here, also another one just a little bit farther to the west and southwest. Both are moving pretty quick at about 10, maybe 15 miles per hour. What do we say we track this guy moving toward 20 mile bend, arriving in the next 10 or 15 minutes or so with some pretty decent amounts of rain. A little bit farther offshore, the rain here is still there, but as you can see, a little weaker. So I think we'll see less rain as we head through the next couple of hours. And as far as the Treasure Coast goes, all quiet, nothing really going on now or earlier today. Here's that map once again showing some of the rainfall totals across South Florida. About 1.5 inches in the gardens across North Palm Beach, Jupiter and DeQuesta, and more than two inches over inlet areas and across Southern Palm Beach County, just across the Broward County line there, more than three inches of rain. So we'll still see a shower or two tonight. Best chance of rain though on Thursday should come early in the morning. How about the tropics? Seemingly that's all we've been talking about for the past couple of weeks. That also is a staple of September. September is the actual peak of hurricane season. We've had more hurricanes in September than all the other months combined tonight. Happy to report it's quiet. One exception, got a tropical wave way out here just to the uh, west of Africa. Pretty good chance it might develop into something as we head toward the weekend, but it's a fish storm. It's going to stay in the ocean, not bother anyone on land. All right, tonight, showers, warm, humid, overnight low about 79 degrees. Best chance of rain on Thursday comes in the morning, hot, humid, of course, with a high temperature of 89, but we will have a nice little breeze tomorrow, and that breeze combined with what's left of Hermine still causing some problems for boating. Small craft caution sees three to five feet and wood waters moderate chop. First alert, seven day forecast. Here we go. Short term, not much rain, just a few showers moving on shore long term, especially the first part of next week. Much better chance of getting wet in South Florida. Mike, thank you. Next, Tiger Woods talking a comeback, but not before dropping in on a local third grade class. That story next. You're watching WPBF 25 News at 6. It is a scene that's played out in several sitcoms and movies over the years. A parent shows up for career day at their child's school, only to be upstaged by another parent. Not this time. There was no staging that guy. That's Tiger Woods surprising his daughter's third grade class at Limestone Creek Elementary in Jupiter. All smiles. Principal tweeted out these photos thanking the golf icon for taking the time to meet the kids. That must have been fun. 
really fun. Meanwhile, Woods announced today that he's planning to return to competitive golf a little sooner than expected. Tiger says he hopes to play in the Safeway Open, which is October 13th. His agent had previously said he would be out of action for the rest of 2016. Woods has not played competitive golf in over a year as he's had to nurse a number of injuries and work on his swing. Come back's just a month away. Mm -hmm. Good luck. All right, first of our Doppler radar still tracking a couple of showers around the acreage. Moving toward 20 mile bend, we'll see a stray shower or two tonight along the coast. Seven day forecast looking okay for Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Much better chance next week and the tropics. We, the way we like them, particularly right now. Thank you for joining us. See you at 11.